Good afternoon. I am your host, Oliver Green. I am your host, Oliver Green, of the pop, the Daddy Issues Podcast Reloaded, uh, of the Daddy Issues Podcast. So real quick, I want to take a time out just to say happy Father's Day for to all the fathers, regardless of what role that you play in the youth, your kids' lives. Um, there are so many youth out there that just don't have the experience of what it feels like to have a father figure or know what it, they don't know what it feels like to have a father or a father figure in their life. So to all of those who are out there and they are actively participating in the growth of a young man, a young lady, kudos to you. What is kudos? I don't really know. I don't care. But um, just a shout out to you. I know sometimes, you know, we see the memes and sometimes the the day gets overshadowed or they say the day gets overshadowed with uh, Mother's Day. But everybody enjoy your day and um, just appreciate. Give yourself a pat on the back if you are actively play, playing a role in a young man, young woman's life today. Uh, For all those that are tuning in live, welcome. For all those who are going to listen to this later, I want you to do drop a hashtag replay if you watch this on Facebook. Um, For my podcast listeners, um, I need for you to go over to Apple, if you are an Apple listener, uh, like the podcast, go down and give me five stars and leave me a comment. Love to hear what your feedback is. Um, have to give a shout out to uh, the Dirt Squad, who handles all of the tech issues behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of things wouldn't happen without them. And uh, the sponsor for the podcast is Regroup for Change. And Regroup for Change helps couples wrap they transform their marriage and their money. So for more information, go to www.financialpeaceandmarriages.com. So my special guest, I'm just going to just like jump right into it. So I have a guest for today. Um, my guest had no idea that they were going to be um, on the podcast today. But they made a comment and I said, yeah, you might want to make sure that you, you know, tune in. So I think they kind of had an idea. Uh, I think they found out Friday, maybe, that they were going to be a guest. Um, This person is near and dear to me. Um, I've known them for a little bit, I'd say. Just, you know, just small part. Um, I believe that I've played a role in their life. Maybe, maybe not. Um, But I could introduce this person. I could probably talk about this person like for the next two hours, but I won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and this is just a short break. And I'm going to bring that person on and I'm going to let that person um, introduce themselves. So give me 10 seconds and I will be right back. You can count. One. So, my special (laughs) guest is none other than Kiara Green. So, I did a little bit of an introduction, but go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Kiara Green. I'm his first daughter, his favorite child, but don't want to tell you otherwise. Um, I attend Florida Atlantic University. I'm a social work student minoring in sociology. And I think that's about everything. I'm also a Zeta, but that's not really important right now. See, I should do that part in there. <laughs> All right. So what I do, I do 
move something. Can you move over a little bit? Well, I, we're not that close. How much? Are I'm not talking? in the screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, you see? So you see the difference? <laughs> you have me over here, like you know, you share a couch with somebody, share a chair with somebody, and they take up the whole chair, and like your butt's hanging off. That's what I thought. Like. Sacrifice. Yeah, I hear you. All right, so I do something called the randoms. I ask you two things, and you pick. Okay. They can be as random as they're random. All right. Um. So, let's see, we have a special guest. so the first one would be live on your own or live with your parents for the rest of your ooh. life. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. I don't know. Adulting is really expensive, but also their parents live on your own. Live on your own. Live I can visit them. Own. I can visit them. Okay. She can live with us for the rest of her life. Yeah, that's also why I picked that. But it's, you know, it, it's just, it, you know, it's one of them things you, you like to know. Sometimes, you know, you you know, you ever ask your kid questions and they don't answer. You put them on the spot and they have an answer. I mean, I live with y'all for like 18 years. Just a little bit. And, and some extra because of the pandemic. Just, just I think I, I think. To it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. The next one. Serve or be served? Serve or be served? Like at a restaurant? Or just in life? How, um, how do you interpret it? Serve or be served? Serve. Okay. Why? Um, I kind of enjoy it as a job, I guess I'm thinking. Yeah, I kind of enjoy it, you know, kicking with people, things like that, making sure they're okay and happy and everything. Okay. Not bad, not bad. She might be different for parents. Maybe. I don't know. Um, Florida or Philly? See, okay. Here's my dilemma. Philly is where all my family is. You know, that's where I came from. But also, Florida really made me. You know, the lingo, the dances, the music. It doesn't get much better than this. Um, not to neglect my roots, but I'm going to choose Florida. Okay. Be an employee or be an employer? An employee or an employer? Um, an employee. Why? You know, I don't really, this is going to sound so bad, but I don't have a problem working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a problem going to work, clocking in, doing what I need to do and go home. Being an employer, that's a whole different type of, I don't want to say struggle, but type of responsibility. Okay. Um, so if you had to pick a favorite number. Would it be the number one or would it be the number four? The number one or the number four? It would be the number two. And when you know the answer to the question that they're not going to pick those, it's really, <laughs> really funny. Because um, I realized when I when I did that, it was for selfish purposes because I'm a Sigma and I'm a one. And her mom is a Zeta and she's, and she's a, a four. four. He really and tried then, me. Y'all saw that, right? And, and I, I told you they could be as random as you know, two. and then she picked, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't know what a two yeah, I, on my line is, so I I don't, but great. You know, I'm glad to have you. Oh, you know, all that, all that good stuff. You're funny. All that good stuff. This club, club. Yeah, if you say. You aces need us. You know what? We're going to, that's another topic for another day. The Neo, the Neo the is telling me. So. Yeah. <laughs> Today's podcast is episode 41. Um, it's rather special. Uh, this time last year, uh, I started. And I wasn't sure how long I was going to do it for. I wasn't even sure if I was going to do it for a year. But the purpose of the podcast was to talk about things that men go through that nobody talks about. And I've had topics over the course of the year. I've had guests. Um, today, Father's Day, I figured since I couldn't get all of them together, because all of them don't like to be on video, but you see this one, like, she was had to go get her lip, make sure her lips were popping. Hey, don't be telling my secrets now. Running, a, I don't know what to wear, you know, all that girl stuff. I had to find a shirt. But, it's important. Um, this one right here is one that 
it she means a lot to me. So I figured what better way to do the year than to have Kiara on. So here we go. Question number one. What's the most important thing to you about a father? Oh, okay. Um, being present. Uh, having a father that is even there, you know. You can you can have a, a dad or a father out in the world, but what really matters is like them being in the house, them being present, being able to sow into you and teach you about little rabbit boys and about life and money and cars. Cars. Okay, cars. But most important, I think, to me is just being present and being able to be there for your child. Or being there for me, I guess, I'm a child. All right. Um, so if... So is having a father around that's in your life, is that a... When you talk to, so growing up and we had a conversation one day and I said, you just be surprised that there are a lot of people that don't have what you have. Mm -hmm. And I think recently I remember you saying that you realize there are a lot of people that are out there that don't have a, weren't raised, don't have access to a two parent household. So talk about a two parent household. What is, what do you Talk about it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> to me, it's always been normal. Like, what do you mean you only live with your, what do you mean, like, your mom's the only one that's, like, there? Like, what do you mean, like, your dad's just the only one? I've always been used to, like, having my mom and my dad at the dinner table, and, like, there are certain things my dad took care of, certain things my mom took care of, certain things I'll talk to my mom about, certain things I'll talk to my dad about, you know, sometimes... You have to be a little bit more wary when going to your father because they'd be like, who did it? Who did it? I'd be like, all right, yeah. all right. Yeah. Chill, 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 chill. It does. It does <laughs> well, a little you crazy. Don't gotta go, you don't got to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's always been a blessing being able to say like, oh, I was doing such such with my dad. Or, oh, yeah, my dad helped me in my car today. Or I, I, I tell people all the time, I call my, if something's wrong with the car, I call my dad for anything. Yeah, the car is doing this. I don't really know what that is. Or I'll come, I can just walk in the door and be like, hey, dad, like, I think the tire might be flat, but like, I don't know how to put air in it. Or, you know, the air is not working in the car. Just having someone I can, the smallest things. Or even in the back of my mind, like, this boy isn't treating me right. I know my dad taught me better. Or maybe, do I need to, do I need to call my dad? To, to call my uncles and everybody because so, somebody might do something right. You know, I got to call him daddy who stay on go. So don't, don't play with me. But it's just, it's always been normal to me. But seeing other people grow up with just a mom and maybe they weren't struggling, but they're, you know, there are some people that may have daddy issues because their dad wasn't there or they do have a dad, but maybe their parents split up and their dad wasn't able to be as present as my dad is, things like that. So you talked about daddy issues. So what, so what did you, how do you? Oh, I'm 20. <laughs> so from a 20 year old and what you've experienced and what you know, how do you think daddy issues affects a 20 year old? Um, I think you know, speaking from a girl's perspective, that's the only perspective I can speak from. I, I, really I really have bye. I have peers and things like that that you know, from the outside I can see that the maybe the men they're pursuing relationships with or seeking are it's not healthy for them, it's not good for them. And that's because they didn't have a dad growing up, or like I said, their dad wasn't present, or maybe their dad was present but they weren't a good dad, so they're trying to fill that hole in that void and they're not doing it the right way versus me. It's like, okay, like I'm looking for my dad, but not to replace the dad that wasn't there. I'm looking for someone who's going to treat me the right way, the way my father does and the way my dad told me I need to be treated. Okay. Do you, 
So, do you have daddy issues? Um, and you no. be and you could be honest. I don't think so. Um, what do you think daddy issues are? Let's start with that. Oh, I think that okay. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I know let's see. I, asked it. I think <laughs> that's my favorite line. That's that's a good question. Um, I think daddy issues are when you didn't have a father or a present male figure in your life that could sow into you positively or show you a positive role model. So then you go out seeking that in the world in various places, trying to get what you didn't have as a child. Because, you know, everything starts in your childhood. So it does it. It does. It does. Your childhood impacts everything in adulthood, whether or not you oh, think oh. about it or not. Whether you think it does or not, it does. So, you know, not having someone that was there to help you learn how to ride a bike or teach you about boys or teach you about, you know, all that other stuff. You're looking for that in other places and now you feel incomplete. Or maybe you are incomplete. And that's okay. Okay. So if somebody that feels incomplete or that may have experienced daddy issues, um, that's your age. Yes. What would you what would you tell them on how to deal with you know, and how, how to deal with them? How to deal with daddy issues? Mm -hmm. Well, I like to volunteer my parents. Um, whether they know it or not. I rag on my parents a lot. So All the time. I sometimes like, oh well, you know, my dad's there if you need him, even though, you know, he may not want to he may not know he wants to help, but he wants to help. So this was not I called my dad and I was four hours away. Somebody else's car done broke down and I'm like, Dad, what do we do? Mind you, he's not there, but um first I would say Try to find a suitable father figure, whether that be in the church or whether that be um, a mentor that can sow into you, but still maintain appropriate boundaries. You know, you don't want to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm looking for a father, so I'm going to look for them anywhere. No, you need someone that can help you get, get on the right path okay, and then. sow into you and better you and give you those building blocks that they didn't get in their childhood or their adolescence. Psst. Mom, she's paid attention. I she do really pay attention. Has. I think I don't listen. <laughs> but yeah. That's a different topic. Oh, and also recognize your body issues and heal from it because you can't Ooh. really, you know, we're having a healing girl summer. Ooh. Really take the time to acknowledge that you do have daddy issues because if you don't think you have them or if you think it may not affect you, you're still going to be doing unhealthy behavior and things that are not good for you. So maybe take some time to sit and think like, even though I have a dad and he was in the house, do I have daddy issues? You first, you have to recognize that you even have daddy issues before you can try to work through them and find a substitute for the father for the father that was not there. So, and I think that that is the, I mean, in, from from the male's perspective, because you know I'm a male. <laughs> I think that is one of the things that is important because you can know that it's there and then not deal with it and then make excuses as to why you don't deal with it. Yep. Uh, and then the excuses, you know, they just pile on and they your excuses become your reality. And then you find yourself repeating the same thing cycle, cycle over and over and over. You find yourself in the same situation. You find yourself choosing the same men, men <laughs> women. Um, you know, you, you just find yourself, uh, don't, you just, you just, you, it, it just that's that thing and then you, you in order to i think in order to to realize that once you realize that you have daddy issues and you seek out the proper assistance um you have to be consistent you know it's one thing to say you have it and you want help but you don't ever go you don't ever yeah. get help um so that that's i think that's imperative um so you have two sisters. I do. And how does 
how does the older sister help the younger sisters deal with growing up with your parents? Well, you know, not many people think this, but I really gave my parents a run for their money when I was a child, you know. I was not really a good child. <laughs> I will admit that. I was not really a good child. But I grew out of it. I take it no. I won't I, I, won't, I won't let you get I want you, you no, you just made some you made some mistakes. But oh, I, I, I think I made, lot, I made a lot of mistakes. But I think it's in the learning process. Yeah. Yes. So, but go ahead. Oh, um, yes. Ahead. You know, I go appreciate ahead. that. I appreciate that. Um, it's really the little things. I try not to be too overbearing with my sisters because I don't want them to think like, oh, great, like I have another parent. But it's really, you know, it's in the small things. For example, when I got my permit, the line my dad used all the time was, well, I don't need my license anymore. So I had to drive everywhere. I did not, there was times I just wanted to ride. I wanted to sit on my phone and ride, but no, I had to drive. Granted, I'm grateful for it now because I was able to get a lot of driving experience, but at the time, there's times they used to be to the store, I'd be mad the whole way, like, I was doing what I I was, da-da-da in my room, and he made me get up and go to Walmart, I don't want to do this, da-da-da-da. Now I'm grateful for it because I have driving experience, but at the time, that is not what I wanted to do. And my sisters are the same way. They don't really like driving. Hate it. I don't really know why. I like it. It gives me freedom. It's not me. I can go anywhere. Excellent. But they don't like it. And, you know, someone sent a message in the group chat yesterday like, Are you, mommy, can you drive us? Da, 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 da. And I already knew. I already knew the next message was, I'll be happy to ride. And what did my mom say? I'll be happy to ride. Okay. And I already knew that made them angry. So I went in each of their rooms respectively, and I was like, I'm just going to let you know now. They did the same thing to me. Now that you have your permit, you're going to be driving everywhere. You're not going to like it, but be grateful and thankful that, one, you have a car that you can, that you have access to. I have friends that don't have their license yet, just got it, and they're my age, 20, 21, because their parents either weren't able or weren't willing so be grateful you even have the opportunity to have a permit and be able to get your mm-hmm. license in a few months. Oh, God. And be able to have access yes. to a car that you yes. can drive and have that freedom. Like, they're going to, I was like, you're, you're going to want that freedom. You're going to want to go to the hair store, go to McDonald's. And if you don't get those hours, nobody is taking you to the DMV. So it's really stuff like that. Just trying to let them know, like, you know, I would do the same stuff, like, there was another instance a few months ago. I was at school and I was just doing some errands, and so I called my sister and we were just talking. Both and I were just talking, and she was just, you know, ranting. Mommy did this, and I did this, and I was like, they did the same thing to me, and I was like, you have two years left in the house. <laughs> like, you really only have two years left. It's not always going to be a walk in the park, but you really only have two years. Left. And they did the same thing to me. That's why I tell them they did the same thing to me. Consistency. They are very. My parents are very consistent, consistent in their parenting. Kiara learned how to drive on the highway because we were going someplace on the highway. And that's all it was to it. <laughs> you better learn how to and, merge today, baby. And you go to school for how many hours away? I will go to school four and a half hours away. And who comes to get you whenever you want to come home? Oh, I come to get myself. <laughs> Jesus carries me home. Okay, nobody... They dropped me off on the first day of school, freshman year. And I said, we're not doing this again. He was like, we're not moving you in. We're not coming to pick you up. Grant, thankfully, I'll be able to have a car that goes with me. But whenever I want to come home, I got to bring myself, baby. Okay, nobody's coming to get me. So it was a learning experience. Um, and the small things that she said that she had to do or that we um, strategically nicely told her, I mean, you know, suggested Suggested that she get suggested. Okay, it's the parent here. Suggested um, that would help along the way. So I don't. I mean, I still worry about when she's on ninety five. Not necessarily for her, because I mean, I I think I've given her. Them folks are crazy. You know how to look for the state troopers, the signs. How, you know what to do. Um, you know, her foot's kind of heavy, but hey, yeah, where do I get that from? I mean, she gets it honestly. I I'm not. They all got like they yeah they like the speed. Anyway, it's not not about that. 
Um, so what, what's the biggest struggle being, being in the house with both parents based upon what it is that you know from your, uh, from your friends that only have one parent. So now you have two parents. So what would you say your biggest struggle was? I don't even think it's really a struggle, but I used to say this all the time. They actually talk to each other like they can talk to each other. Like it's like okay, I could I could do. For example, I I can get in trouble with one parent, and I'm like okay, like I'll be hoping you know it's not that big a deal. She's not gonna go and tell my dad. Next thing I know, he's in the kitchen making jokes about it. Like who even told you that? You weren't there. Like how did you find this out? I think. You know, they actually have a good relationship and they be talking. That's the biggest show. They be talking like, you didn't need to know all that, sir. You didn't, you didn't need to know. Or you didn't need to know, ma'am. You didn't need to know. The, um, and then we've always told her, be mindful when you're out because you never know who knows us that knows you. Oh, yeah. Does that, do you, why are you looking like that? Has, oh, has that happened? Yeah, that happens all the time. There was one time. <laughs> There's two examples. There's one time in high school, and I wasn't doing anything inappropriate or anything like that. I just happened to be standing by my car talking to a friend who happened to be of the male species, okay? And I get home, and my dad's like, Oh, who are you talking to? Who, you who, are, who are you boy. talking to outside your. What boy were you talking to? huh I'm like what do you what do you mean what boy was I talking to so then I, I'm I'm thinking like who who doesn't see me like granted I wasn't doing anything like I wasn't doing anything bad especially in yeah, high school but I was all. just like people really be out here snitching on me it was worse when we were in Tallahassee because everybody knew them like literally everybody knew them it happens all the time it happens all the time people will just go tell him and then he'll be like Oh yes, they, he wouldn't tell me who who said it. I was like, oh, I heard you were doing X, Y, and Z. Good can't job. Or I'm like, geez, like I can't get away with anything, which is good. Switching lanes wrong. She was late for school one day. I knew not because I the telephone call. I never get the telephone calls. I would get the text messages, but never from the school. It was always somebody that yeah, uh, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um. So if you could ask your dad any question that you didn't ask, what would it be? I could ask you <clears throat> any question that I didn't ask? Hmm? Oh, that's a good question. Yet again, I know I asked this. Um, I was oh, ready man. for the question, but... Time isn't unlimited. I don't know <laughs> if there's anything I would ask you. That's cool. Oh, wait, no. I feel like I might know. It's about to be a doozy, yo. Okay, what has been the most, I don't want to say satisfi satisfying, the most rewarding thing about being a dad? Like, what, what was one moment where you were like, oh, yeah, I'm very grateful to be a dad, or very grateful to be their dad, or anything like that? Um, I'd have to say... <clears throat> No, I've been around for everything. You you actually really have. Like I I've I've been around. There's nothing that I haven't missed. Like I I've first steps first. And by the way, I got this one. She walked with me. Hey. <laughs> um, her mom's about to comment. Sorry, Never mind. mom. Sorry, mom. Uh, but I've been there. Um, growing up, my dad wasn't there for me, so. When I went to stay with him after I graduated, he made the comment, do half the things that I didn't do. He didn't do no, too much. Nice. So it wasn't do half, just do all the things you didn't do. And one of the things, you know, I, I went to school, um, with, I went to predominantly white high school and, you know, during games, their dads were there. You know, so I played football for four years. And he's only seen me like one time at a scrimmage. 
So, you know, it, it was it was one of those wanting to be there for you to experience it with you. You know, so we've been from Tallahassee to North Carolina. We've been from Tallahassee to Dallas, Texas. Tallahassee to Miami. Um, Tallahassee to Humble, Texas for synchronized swimming, track, (laughs) gymnastics, from uh, Jacksonville to Phoenix for gymnastics. So it's, I wanted to make sure that if nothing else, um, I ex- experienced it all. And I didn't experience it from a phone call. I didn't experience it from your mom having to tell me or wondering if she was going to tell me. Um, but yeah, being able to say that I, 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 exp- I, like I was there. Yeah, so let's see if someone's going to come today. I love it with you. <laughs> she is special like her. Never uh, mind. Never mind. Um, all right. So with the wrap up, I usually do a. Where do you see yourself? I'm going to go out, off script a little bit. Oh, Lord. So where do you see yourself in five years? In five years. <clears throat> let's see. Five years, I'll be 25. I would have graduated with my bachelor's of social work, my minor in sociology, and I would have graduated with a master's degree in applied mental health counseling. So I would like to think that in five years, I'll be in Louisiana. (laughs) I'll be in Louisiana um, working carefully, at um, a facility where I'll be, I want to be a play therapist. If you don't know what play therapy is, it is basically observing children between the ages of three and 12 and helping them work through their trauma and the way they play, whether that be with puppets, drawings, toys, things of that nature. So doing that in five years. Cool. And we really tried to steer her away from being anything that had to do in a social They tried. Show. It didn't work. People try all the time. But, but it's like, I'm not hearing it. It goes in one ear, not the other. But that's what she saw. She, I've, I've been in child welfare. My mom's been in child welfare. So it's one of those, you had your pick wherever you wanted to go. But I really was like, can you do something else? Like numbers, math or something like that. I computer. She not go computer. Well, oh, no. I mean, she could look at it. I'm not YouTube. a science student. She okay. could look, at, look at YouTube all the time. She good. She good with that. I tell you, YouTube. I work people. Help yeah. them. Help them. Help the babies. Um. So we did five years. So what would you? What would Kiara tell? The tw- what would twenty year old Kiara tell the twelve year old Kiara about? dealing with their parents oh let's see 12 how old was i I was like in middle school Mm -hmm. this was a rough time um i would probably say lean on them and trust them more i for some reason obviously when you're at that age you're like all angsty and you're like they don't understand me they don't understand what's going on but it's like they've been there done that been there, done it again, been there, done it thrice, you know. So definitely trust them and lean on them more because they literally were in middle school at some point. They probably had it worse than I did because I was very uh, privileged and still am. You heard that? She still is. I still am. A little spoiled, but... All right, so what is, whether old or young, what is one thing you can tell? Um, I had a girl, but that female out there that hasn't had their father in their life. What am I, what am I telling a girl that hasn't had their father in their life? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
this is gonna sound a little bad at first, but like your mother can only do so much. At the end of the day, your mom's not a dad, your dad is not a mom. They can try to fill in the roles and do as much as they can to supplement for the other, but if you have the resources to find a I say a father supplement because you're gonna need it. You're going to need it. Like <clears throat> I tell people all the time, if I didn't have a dad, I don't know where I would be. I would be, I'm already a little bit of a hot mess. I would be a really big hot mess. Y'all be like, y'all need to get it together, okay? But I really would say try to find someone who can help lead you and guide you because you're going to need it. Okay, a mother or, no, well, yeah, they wouldn't have a dad. So a mother can only do so much. Okay. So you heard it. If your dad is not in the picture, find a father supplement. I mean, and that goes to the young girl that I don't think I have, I, like my listening audience, they start at 18. So the 18-year-old that didn't have a dad, the 25-year-old that didn't have a dad, 45-year-old that didn't have a dad. I think that applies across the board. This is coming from a 20-year-old. So dads that are out there listening, um, my advice to you is it's never too late, despite the fact you may think so. But your daughter, your son, they need you. There are, there are things that only you, sir, can teach him or her. Sure. <clears throat> you know... Super quick, I had to interrupt. Like, for example, I can go to my mom and ask her about guys and how to navigate certain relationships or situations, but there's really nothing like getting a male's perspective. Like, my mom and I can keep like guys and their egos and blah, blah, blah. But thing. I just did this like the other day when I came home from work. My mom and I had our own feelings about the situation. My dad was like, let me spin it and explain how he saw it and how he felt in the situation and she didn't like it. She ain't like it at all. I didn't like it because she's tight. wrong. He's she, wrong. She, but she was tight. <laughs> it's nothing like being able to not see inside the male's brain because I never want to be up there, but mm -hmm. get experience and help from the male's perspective. Because it really makes a difference. Cool. Continue on with you. I appreciate that. Of course. She's going to let me continue. So you, you, know, <laughs> you know who's not coming back, right? You know who's not yeah. going to be the co-host because she's bossy. But she gets that from her. Never mind because I'm Father's Day will be over and I'll have to live there. Anyway. anyway um, so with that being said, I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And um, why are you laugh? Because it's not busy. It's not busy. It's not busy now, but since you have home, it has been. That's because I have an issue sitting still. That's I, my, I, that's my I was going to say it. It's, it's not supposed to be busy. Because somebody said before they came home. I'm not working. I don't want to work. All summer. Working. I'm not doing. Where was I at 5 a.m. every day? The pool. She beat me out of the house. She's at work when I'm going to the gym. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, work on your work. It, when you say you're not going to do something, don't do it. Yeah. Follow through. That, that, that's something we're working on. Are we? Yes. We'll see. So thank you all those that are tuning in. Again, deal with your daddy issues today. Otherwise, your daddy issues will deal with you tomorrow. I know that's right. Peace. I like that. <laughs>